What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I'm, of course, Pitching Ninja, and I'm here with Will Leahy. What's up, Will? Ninja, feeling great, man. I'm psyched. I'm going to Pittsburgh, the Steel City today, to uh, watch the Red Sox come into town tomorrow, actually. So in the comments, if uh, if you have any recommendations for bars, restaurants I should go to before or after the game, please let me know, and I'll uh, maybe, maybe I'll see you there. Ninja, you have any recs for Pittsburgh? You ever been? Never. And I want to go. That's like the prettiest stadium in baseball. It's amazing. I think it's the last great stadium I've yet to go to. So I'm looking forward to checking it off the, the list. You should hang out with Jared Jones, who is our next Baseball Dojo podcast interview. If I see him, I will certainly, uh, Tell I'll him certainly shout him. Hi. Before we get into the whip around the league, remember to hit that subscribe button. We're nearing 200,000 subscribers, so be a part. You're not going to want to miss any of these daily videos and interviews, so hit subscribe. And without further ado, here's our whip around the league. We're going to start with Griffin Canning, who had four Ks in five and a third innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs and sliders. He faced Ryan Pepio, who had seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up one run. On three hits. He had these fastballs, including this painted fastball, this bend the knee slider, and this change up for a sword. He's looking pretty solid. Jack Leiter had three Ks in three and two thirds innings, giving up eight hits and seven runs and three walks in his major league debut. He did have these fastballs and change ups. And honestly, he's known mostly for his fastballs, but I thought yesterday his change up was his best pitch. And when I interviewed him in college, his changeup was a pitch that he wasn't that great with. So he's made huge strides on his changeup. Um, he was hurt by this ball that probably should have been caught. And you see this, you got to catch this at a major league level. I mean, you got to catch this at a high school level. The one thing that I think Jack Leiter has going for him, and why any, nobody should panic about this start. I mean, you know, you got to start somewhere. It's great to see him out there. His dad's pumped up, but Jack Leiter has an encyclopedic knowledge of pitching. Well, I was watching the video of you talking to Stroman. My dad always said it may be like a, a finger or a pencil width in between the fingertips. Not too wide, but I mean, guys like Glasno, I mean, he's wide. So and I think I think Wainwright was talking about how he used the thumb. I think you posted a, about Dan Straley. He, he has it up on the side. That Adovino actually goes this side with this, thinking if I could get even half as good of a Giolito type changeup just falling down. I think you posted at one time of Scherzer after he got lit up or something. He said, he said, sometimes you just have to, you have to tell yourself nothing's wrong. Dude will fix whatever he's got going. A little nerves. He'll be fine. They also, they also got the win. They did get the win. In a way he did his job. In a way, in a strange way. <laughs> I mean, here's Jack Leiter's mechanics compared to his dad, Al's. And also here is a Jack Leiter. He faced Kenta Maeda, who had two Ks in two and two-thirds innings, giving up six runs, five of them earned. Maeda had this slider and splitter, but generally did not look really good. He was getting hit hard. Brennan Bernardino had two Ks in two scoreless innings, giving up no hits and only one walk. He had his breaking ball for a sword in this painted fastball. He faced Carlos Carrasco, who had five Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs on four hits. He had this curveball slider and changeup, and picked up a sword on this sweeper. Ryan Nelson went two innings with no Ks, giving up no runs and two hits. Another hit he gave up was this hit that hit his wrist or arm. I can't tell where exactly this hit, but it hurt and knocked him out of the game. I don't think it's anything severe. It looks like maybe a contusion, but uh, hopefully Ryan Nelson is okay. He faced Logan Webb, who is yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, at least at the major league level. Webb had five Ks and seven scoreless innings, giving up two hits and one walk. He had this four-seam fastball for a sword, these nasty change-ups, but his pitches of the day were these two-seamers. Absolutely disgusting. Check out the run on these things. Also, coincidentally, because it was a light day in baseball, I was watching Killers of the Flower Moon. And my man Jesse Plemons was acting while Logan Webb was pitching. Coincidence? Who do you think had the better performance, Ninja? That is a great question. I'm a fan of Jesse Plemons. I mean, Todd in Breaking Bad. Meth Damon. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, anyway, I but Logan Webb was really good yesterday, too. I'm going to give it a tie. But only one of them will be in my top five filthiest pitches of the day. Stay tuned to see who it is. My filthiest relievers from yesterday... Hunter Gaddis had this slider off the plate, but we'll take it. 
Tim Heron had this curveball for a sword. Matt Moore had this nasty knuckle curve. Phil Maton had this filthy curveball. Justin Slayton had this heater. Kirby Yates had this elevated fastball. Garrett Clevenger had these fastballs. Luis Garcia had this splitter and slider. Jose Leclerc had this painted heater. And Shelby Miller had this nasty splitter. The filthiest pitcher overall yesterday, without a doubt, is Paul Skeens. Paul Skeens is absolutely disgusting. He would be an ace right now in the major leagues if they ever called him up, which they have to. He's making it impossible to keep him down. He had eight Ks in three and a third innings last night, bringing his total this season in AAA to 27 strikeouts in 12 and two thirds innings <laughs> <laughs> with a 116 batting average against and a 0. 0.00 ERA. And I'd normally say that wasn't sustainable, but it is f***ing sustainable. Paul Skeens is absolutely ridiculous. His fastballs were up to 102 miles an hour. He had these wicked sliders, filthy changeups. Here's an overlay of his fastball and slider. You can see how well these pitches play together. Dude commands the zone. According to Codify Baseball, Skeens has thrown 104 of the 105 fastest pitches by a starting pitcher in Triple A this season. This man is a monster. Help these AAA players out. Put Paul Skeens in the major leagues. We need him alongside Jared Jones as the electric duo. Bring him up. You heard it here. Demanding it. I mean, Ninja, that's got to be his last time down there, right? The the Pirates are actually good this year. It's not like they're doing such a long play. It's the last time he's down there, right? The other day, I saw an ant in my house, and I blew it up with five sticks of dynamite. <laughs> that is what Paul Skeens is doing to AAA hitters. This is overkill. It's not fair. Stop it. You're killing people out here, Skeens. You're killing people. And NJ, while we're out of the big leagues here, it brings us to our dong of the day. And that, of course, goes to the godfather, Jack Caglione, with this, this oppo dong here for a home run in his eighth straight game. I mean, th this guy is just out of control. He's he's one off from the NCAA record of nine. Eight is the most ever in the major leagues with a home run. It's not exactly the 516-foot blast he hit last game, but uh, he still put this one out. It still counts, Ninja. What do you think of Cags here? I thought he mishit this ball. I thought this was a pop-up in between probably the outfielders. I thought the shortstop was going to run this down, and this ball left the park. Look at the height on this. This is too high, to quote Major League. He's an absolute beef castle ninja. Dude, it's freaking ridiculous. He's hitting 407 with 22 home runs and an 860 slugging percentage. And on the bump, he has 49 strikeouts in 39 and a third innings. Basically leads Florida in pitching, too. I don't know what to say about this, dude. Now on to my top five filthiest pitches of the day. At number five, I have Alex Lang and these curveballs, which were really nasty and came in at a huge point in the game with the bases loaded. At number four, I have Ryan Walker and these nasty two seamers. At number three, I have Logan Webb and these filthy two seamers. At number two, I have Emmanuel Class A and these absolutely disgusting cutters. Look at this one boring in on you. And then he goes back door with this other one. I love the straight on camera angle where you can see that cut on these fastballs. And at number one, no surprise, it's everything that Paul Skeens throws. The man is the filthiest pitcher on the planet right now, other than Mason Miller, because Mason Miller can never be topped. But this is ridiculous. And now my pitching engine moment of Zen. It's a Jung Hoo Lee fan Oh club. my goodness. That's pretty fun, I have to say. Uh, Lucille looks like the odd guy out there, I gotta tell you. Get out of the picture, Lucille. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Clark Schmidt for 5Ks or more, then take Blake Snell for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Yoshinobu Yamamoto for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?